video about the DB11, we focused on the styling of the exterior in particular. But now we're going to look at the engineering that goes into the vehicle. So we'll look at powertrain, chassis, and also some of the very quick aerodynamics that keep the DB11 planted on the road. Firstly, we've got our clamshell bonnet now in the up position. And when the car is exposed like this, it looks really magnificent. You have the wheel arch completely exposed, and when we're talking about the uh, design of the vehicle, we mentioned that these side scrapes were particularly clever from an aerodynamic point of view. Now, what typically happens is uh, when a vehicle's traveling along, you get a buildup of dirty air within the wheel arch. Now, if you look at a race car, on the top of the wings, it will have uh, slats that essentially will let out that dirty air. But slats are a bit aggressive, they're a bit shouty on something so graceful and elegant as a DB GT car. So the very clever solution that we've got is you have slats here within the wheel arch and then they float, let the air flow through and basically it starts to go into the side strake. Now the side strake is ribbed if you feel underneath. It's almost bobbled rather than ribbed and what happens is the air shoots from here into there, into these bubbles, and spins quite violently, and then essentially shoots along the side of the vehicle, expelling all that dirty air from underneath the wheel arch. Now, focusing under the bonnet itself, we get to the heart of an Aston Martin. And in this case, it's the kind of heart that we've all come to expect, a big V12 engine. But unlike the six liter engine that we've had in the Vanquish and the V9 beforehand, this is reduced in size, it's now 5.2 litres, and instead of being naturally aspirated, it comes with a twin turbo. And the twin turbo is great because it gives it so much torque. So torque is really usable power. It's the sort of power that helps you overtake on the motorway. It's the sort of power that gets you out of trouble. And this has a whopping 700 newton metres of torque. Also, pair that to the fact that the car pumps out 600 brake horsepower. And this is a real powerhouse engine that Aston Martin can be proud of. Also, it's not just all about the power. So, instead of just always running on 12 cylinders, underneath um, it essentially will uh, cut out and deactivate certain cylinders, thereby giving you better fuel economy and better emissions. And rather than just cut one bank of cylinders, it's much more clever than that. And it will essentially var be variable in terms of which cylinders it cuts down and therefore not uh, causing any unnecessary stress on the engine. If we then move back along the car, in terms of technology, we've got 360 degree cameras all around. We can just see the little camera there in the bottom of the wing mirror. And if we move further along, We've got what you might dismiss as a styling detail, but it's not at all. Essentially, there's a cavity here, behind the rear quarter window. And what, what that cavity feeds is an air duct. And there's tubing that goes through this wing, and basically the air channels through there, into the tubing, and then into the boot. So if I just press the boot on here, and open up the boot itself, you'll see that we have these tubing ducts. And essentially they feed into the boot itself and then into the aeroblade feature here. Now the aeroblade is incredibly clever. We mentioned earlier to keep the elegance of the, the rear of the car, to not resort to spoilers, that essentially this then shoots air out, causes downforce on the car, and actually the air shoots out to about here, you could see it, um, and then a spoiler tracks and that all keeps the car very planted and very stable. We then open up the boot, the boot is incredibly usable and a really good size and the all important golf club test is this will fit two sets of golf clubs within it. Coming round again, we get to the wheels. What we have it's a tyre created by Bridgestone specifically for Aston Martin and specifically for the DB11. And a really nice touch is that it's got a sort of unique Aston Martin name, it's the S007 tyre. Now, what you'll notice about this wheel is it's kind of against fashion in that it's not licorice thin rubber. It's actually a fairly thick side wheel. And the reason for that being 
this is above all beyond being a sports car, it's a GT car. It needs to transport you to your end destination you know, in absolute comfort and probably over long transcontinental distances. Also, to uh, create further uh, stability, you've got double glazing within the car as well, so that reduces unwanted low flows. Now the 5.2 litre V12 engine emits all its noise out of here, and from what we've heard so far, the good news is that it makes an awesome Aston Martin growl and purposeful noise. However, sadly we don't have the key, because this car is just here for static display purposes, because I'd love to start it for you now. Behind these gorgeous alloy wheels, we have the braking setup for a DB11. Now you'll notice it's not a carbon ceramic brake. Carbon ceramic brakes are incredibly fashionable, but ultimately they're a racing car solution that has found its way onto many road cars. Now, there are some drawbacks about a ceramic brake in terms of sometimes they can be quite noisy, um, and also they don't necessarily always offer the progressive braking that you'd want in a road car, certainly from a feel point of view. So, in the DB11, we've opted for a steel brake on a floating hub, and it gives great stopping ability, but also it's quiet and, and very progressive and, and very lovely to drive. Behind here, we have our suspension and damper setup. Now, Aston Martin typically go for best of, best of breed components. So we have uh, braking from Brembo, for example. When we talk about the interior, we'll talk about the leathers that come from Bridge of Weir. And when it comes to our damper setup, we go to a company called Bilstein. Now, the reason we use these is because they are the best components that we could possibly get. Now, the damping setup is especially clever, so it's an adaptive, damper, uh, an adaptive damper. Now, by that, we mean that the damper is always adaptive so in terms of what the car does. So, there is a brain in the car, and that brain monitors everything that you're doing. So, it knows how much steering lock you're putting in, it knows how much throttle load is on the car. It knows what the road surface is doing. It's reading so many different things and the damper is reacting as appropriate. So for instance, you turn one way, the damper will firm up as appropriate the other way, maintaining complete body composure on the car. If you go into a heavy braking maneuver, the dampers will, have, will react so that the car doesn't pitch, the nose of the car doesn't pitch under heavy braking. Now, this uh, adaptive damping setup is uh, it's got three different stages. So by that we mean that uh, you put it into sport mode, for example. If you imagine this is the damper, the damper uh, the travel will shorten, and it doesn't have to react quite so so much to the inputs that you put in. And we also have a track set up as well, where that damper compresses even more. If you did take the car on track, in which it would be very able, it's got great weight distribution. Um, almost perfect 50 50, it's 52% uh, at the front, 48 at the rear because the gearbox is, is, is hung out over the rear axle. If you did take it on track, basically when you hit a, a, hit a curve and you're in track mode, the damper would release to, uh, to you know, give you some compliancy and suppleness and, and not create a, a shock into the cabin. We mentioned in terms of weight distribution, so all Aston Martins have a transaxle layout. By that, we mean we've got a big engine at the front front mid mounted so it's set quite far back we try and keep as little weight as we can over the front because this new db11 has turbochargers and intercoolers it's a little bit no, more nose heavy than the db9 that, that it succeeds but it's been engineered in such a way that it's got still uh, as much as as much of if not more balance and poise of any car that's gone before 